2008, we co-founded this initiative together with the foreign ministry to build a bridge uh, to across the Atlantic, in particular to the United States, but also to Canada to work together on issues of, in particular, climate change. So a climate salon, the idea of it, there, there are a couple of goals with a salon. One is to bring together and help build community wherever we have our salon. So to really not only have the people al already working on environmental issues or on climate change specifically, but to truly bring people together that are connecting climate change to other issues in the community. So we have educators, we have artists, we have people from political um, systems, etc. And to bring them together and to help build more collaboration locally. And then our second bit is to truly create a space where we inspire people or re-inspire people to take action on climate. So each salon, we have live performance from local artists, whether it's sometimes dance, sometimes music, other types of performance art. Then we'll have a really diverse panel of conversation where people actually come from very diverse backgrounds. They might be designers and professors and activists and are all talking about the same topic on connecting climate to other issues, but are doing it in different ways. And one of, I think, the most exciting things about these salons is no one comes with a presentation. Actually, none of the speakers here know what we're going to talk about, and so it's a really fresh uh, conversation about you know, how we can connect to climate change, make it more personal, and g inspire people to take action. And we're all here because we know climate's a big deal, and we know that it needs to be addressed. We, knew that we know also that we need to cooperate with each other. And I think that's why this is such a great event, and we thank you to Vera for, for sponsoring this. Uh, President Obama and Chancellor Merkel are both well-known internationally as climate experts and climate advocates. And I think together we can be very proud, and this is a transatlantic room, and I think we can be very proud of our achievements. And those go back to the U.S.-China Agreement 2014. It goes to the G7 Elmo Declaration, which for the first time ever commits the G7 countries to a decarbonization. But I think that, um, you know, when I came in and I was asked to put what do you think of when you think of climate change, I put people. And I maybe should have put personal. Because I think when you talk to people about what climate change actually means and what that means at a local level and in their community and how they may be seeing changes and what's important to them, you get a much different response. People respond really well in, in certain instances to talking about resiliency and preparedness and thinking about sort of another way of looking at the long-term impacts of climate change and action that they can take or if there are other economic or public health issues. So I think a lot of the work that, that I've seen going on in communities that's been successful is when communities are able to match the actions they want to take that have an emissions implication with the priorities of the people in their community. And that may range, and it may not necessarily be an explicit climate change conversation, but it can get people motivated, and it can get a lot of important work done. We were always really excited to come to Germany to both share the experiences that we saw of great climate action happening throughout the US, but then to also collect more stories of the great work being d done here in Germany to bring back to the US for next year after COP21. Toss the ocean over onto its back, cut trees to their knees, swim in blood, swim in cash, swim in safety, glacier turned ice cube, cocktail gallons of carbonated sugar, hot tub, we drunk off of it. But one cannot break down walls while leaning against them. 